and welcome everyone. It's great to have you here. You should know that this is part of our longstanding conversation series, which is a interview series where we ask folks who have an expertise from academia, media, and the arts to share an hour of their time with us while we dive deep into their work. This is in particular uh, a special event because it is our first event in our new double exposure series. Um, there are many new series that are launching, and so keep an eye on that. It's really, really fun. There's like so many friendly nerds who are coming out to be a part of this. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Double Exposure. Um, Double Exposure is a photography-focused um, series, that, uh, as the name suggests, and as you've probably figured out, part, uh, pairs two photographers of and from the Arab world who are interested in having a conversation with each other and with us to better understand each other's work and have us better understand the work that they're going through and how they, they think about their own work. So far, we have three events scheduled. They are amazing and they are in collaboration with one of our favorite organizations, Gulf Photo Plus. So Rema, if, who is from GPP, if you want to unmute yourself, I don't know if you can, I may have to ask you to. Um, there you go, thank you. Hey, Mike. so tell us all about GPP so folks can understand what it is. Yeah, um, I don't think I see a lot of familiar faces, maybe just a few, so that's great. Um, I'm so glad you could all join us today. Um, but I'd just like to give you guys an introduction about GPP. Um, so uh, my name is Rama. I work for Gulf Photo Plus or GPP uh, as we're known around here. Uh, we are a photography center based in Dubai as part of like this very vibrant uh, artsy community called Esercal Avenue. Um, and so on the business side of things, we run like practical photography workshops for uh, individuals and corporates and photo walks. Uh, we have a high quality print lab. We have a little bookstore and we sell films. Um, and so like we, we have a lot of uh, resources and stuff going on all the time. Um, and we've kind of been like a hope for uh, photography and its development in the region. Um, and the business side of things really helps like support that uh, wider aim. Uh, and focus uh, to like be a platform for photographers from the MENA and showcase their work. Uh, and we also provide them resources to learn from and exhibit the work of like both emerging and established photographers. Uh, the wonderful Tomato who you'll be hearing from today is uh, just one of those people um, who's also exhibited with us uh, just last year in Dubai. Um, and I feel that we're very privileged to be able to like cultivate visual literacy, um, both locally, but I also felt that we've been able to like expand that dialogue abroad um, and programs like Double Exposure uh, is one of the ways in which we can do that. So um, yeah, we're very pleased to welcome you to the very first iteration of Double Exposure with Afrika uh, with Tamar Abdelhadi and uh, Tanya Trabulsi. Thank you guys. Cool, thanks Rama. So go check out GPP online. They are one of our favorite organizations and we're honored to be able to work with them. Um, okay, on to, the, on to the special event. So uh, welcome everyone. I'm honored to introduce our two special guests. Samara Abdelhadi is a Iraqi photographer whose work is concerned with the historic and contemporary representation of her own culture in its diversity. Abdelhadi was a founding member of Ruwaya Collective, a photography cooperative of female photographers in the Middle East. She is a member of the We Are the Medium, an artistic, an artist, a collective comp a compromise of interdisciplinary artists working independently. Tanya spent her childhood traveling back and forth between two countries while in, oh, that's Tanya, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't make Actually, sense. I think you can you can totally intertwine us. I think it kind of makes uh, makes that sense. We grew, up, exactly. we grew up together, right? <laughs> no, we didn't. Sounds a lot like come on. Okay, so <laughs> Tanya spent her childhood uh, traveling back and forth between two countries. While in Austria, she completed high school and graduated from fashion school with a diploma in fashion design. Soon after, she developed a growing interest in photography around which she now centers her practice. Tanya's work explores highly personal themes of belonging, identity, and memory, as well as the sociological stigmas related to female identity. Tanya, Amada, welcome to Double Exposure. Hello. Hello, thank, thank you for having, having, having me. <laughs> this is, um, as I told you both uh, before we got started, um, this is a real treat for 
both uh, for Afikra and for me personally. So let's start with um, my first question that is sort of focused on your childhoods. And so maybe uh, Tanya, we can start with you. Um, I'm really curious about uh, artists' attachment to the art that they sort of practice and when that attachment started. So for those of you who can't see the screen, my question is, what was the first photo that you saved or hung up on a, on your wall as a kid or the first photo that you remember making an impression on you? Tamara, you want to start? Uh, I mean, sure, I can start. As you can. Yeah, yeah, I can. I mean, <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind uh, uh, for me is... Um, uh, I so I grew up uh, in Abu Dhabi, and uh, then we lived. Uh, we moved to Montreal in, I would say, when I was about thirteen. So we always had um, a very rich library. My parents had a lot of books uh, from from all over the place at home in our library, and one of the books that I really, really was very affected by, or actually I should say two, but one of them is pure photography. is called um, uh, Iraq by um, Ramzi, uh, sorry, um, what's his name? Nazim, uh, damn, I can't remember. I can't remember his name, but it, it's called Iraq. I'll, I'll come uh, up with the, the name now, but um, it was basically photographs from Iraq in the 50s and the 60s taken by a photographer who also happens to be a graphic designer. And uh, those, that book for me and those images were very, inspiring and sort of stayed with me throughout my childhood. Um, and then the other book was Return to the Marshes by Young and Wheeler, which is a yeah. book um, that I think is in a lot of um, Iraqi diaspora libraries. Um, and it's a book about the Iraqi marshes uh, published in 1977. Um, I, I, so I remembered the, the first book's author is Nadlam Ramzi. So okay. that was the first book author. And uh, it's a very, very beautiful book. Uh, it's hard to find. I tried to find another copy of it recently. Very expensive and very limited, but extremely inspiring to me. Black and white images um, of Iraq in the 50s and the 60s. That's me. Yeah. So yeah. like a, a direct, uh, directly related to some of the stuff that you're sort of extending right now. Now, exactly. Like it, it yeah. came full circle, I would say. Like, uh, yeah, no. Cool. Tanya, what about you? Well, me, I uh, even as a child, I used to love going through my family archive. I've said this many times before. Um, and I remember this one photo of my grandmother. It's like this classical portrait in the, taken in the 40s, black and white. It's actually hanging in my living room. I didn't, uh, I didn't bring it to show it, but anyway, it's just this classical uh, 40s beauty. And I, uh, I think that was the first photo that made an impression on me. And I think I didn't hang it back then, I guess, but it's hanging here now, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I have a question. Before we got started, the, the idea of this whole series is to try to um, pair two photographers who really respect each other and respect each other's work who are of and from the same place and sort of have them be in conversation. And before we got started, I said, <laughs> I said to both of you, I said, you know, Tamara, I feel like a lot of your work, um, or Tanya, I feel like um, a lot of your work, uh, both of your work uh, features decay, right? <laughs> and as I said that, <laughs> Tanya, you, you burst into flames saying, what are you talking, talking oh, about? Right. Now that I see this photo, I forgot about it. <laughs> no, but well, tell, me, tell me the instinct that you had, because both of you seem to sort of refute that idea. So yeah, uh, go for it, Tanya. I don't refuse the idea. It's just that DK is a very violent word. And it's, it's like as if Beirut was dead. Beirut is not dead. I mean, let's not uh, let's not uh, um, forget the problems we have. But at the same time, we do have beautiful moments and we do have beauty. I insist on that. All right. No matter in what uh, situation or what uh, in what place we are in Beirut, but we, there are beautiful moments. If it's just the sun that sets or that rises or the light 
you know, these simple things. And I think these are the things that keep me going, especially at the moment with all these, uh, with all the chaos we're living. I, I, um, I agree. I think that uh, for me, like if I look at Tanya's work, I don't feel, uh, you know, that word decay is very like, ah. yeah. uh, you know, it's like, actually and i think i think tanya probably feels similarly when she photographs it's like um photographing something that you appreciate and something that you want to share uh, like something beautiful mm-hmm. um that you want to share from your surroundings or you know tanya's work is a, a lot of uh, uh still life or a lot of uh landscape um and and mine I, I think is a lot of portraiture which at least that's what I've been doing for for a long time um I think both of from both sides um we want to share beauty that we're curious about I mean this is I mean not Tanya you can tell me how you feel about that but no, that's I- what I see when I see your work I see like you know sort of fragments and moments of um you know yeah some you know some fragments uh some history some um memory which is with yeah go ahead no no it's it's absolutely true and i mean i see that in your work too and i think when i first looked at your work i felt very uh i felt like a familiar feeling as if there is a kind of similarity although the photos are, of course, not the same. The style is still different. But I feel that the feeling you get or that I get when I look at your photography, it feels familiar. I feel home in your photos. And I really like that. <laughs> you know, there's so much. Wow. Just, can we actually jump to the, um, the barbershop uh, series that, that uh, Tamara, you, you have, which is just stunning. And for me, this idea of uh, feeling home and actually like um, almost like seeing myself in these, in, in these images, um, I felt like this, that what Tanya just said resonated really, really uh, tremendously. So Tamara, can you just sort of like walk us through a little bit about the genesis of this, this series and how you even approach this type of stuff? Um, you know, I would go back to the fact that I photograph a subject that I'm very curious about and things that I want to know more about. And uh, as a photographer, I feel like I have this tool or a friend that allows me to go into a place that I wouldn't necessarily go into by myself, like a barber shop, and say, hi, you know, I think that you're your work is really interesting and the cuts and the you know uh, face masks that you do are really cool um can i photograph uh your you know clients and and your work and and everything that you do and so that was really in essence for me i was just really inspired by the barber shops and the kind of haircuts uh that were that i was seeing around um palestine it started really in palestine and ramallah and um, then I started doing it in Beirut, um, in Naba. And so it was a Syrian uh, barber shop uh, in, in Naba, in uh, Beirut. And then the one in Ramallah was in the, um, in the Sharfat refugee camp, which, uh, which was, sorry, in the Qalandia refugee camp in Ramallah. And so there were these different hairstyles that were happening and th- th- this, these kind of communities that would get together in barbershops and and um, they were mostly you know from their small communities and I was very curious about that not just the style part of it the hair but also the self-care of how you know these men would go in once a week get a fresh shave get a face mask you know these kind of things that I thought were very beautiful and I wanted to share them um so that was, you know, that's kind of how it came about. And then I just went into a bunch of barber shops, introduced my project, and whoever welcomed me in uh, became the ones that I uh, ended up making as a part of my project. Yeah, I, I always wonder, like, when I see these two different styles, because Tanya, have you done have you done much uh, like portraits? I know that um, 
at some point you were doing a bunch of sort of portraits for uh, for musicians and trying to capture them this way. Okay. Like, how? Do, what is the difference in 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 what approach you would take with this I type mean, of thing? Back then, it was different for me. Now, I I don't do so much portraiture anymore. I uh, keep my distance a bit. But back then, it was mainly people I knew. That I knew all of the musicians, so it was easier for me to approach them because I'm a bit shy sometimes. So I, <laughs> I can't really go to strangers and tell them, can I shoot you? I have rare days where I, where I can do that, but usually I, I, I can't. So back then it was very helpful that I knew these people, not very closely, but I knew them. So it helped me and it was much easier to, to approach them with yeah. my camera. Um, I, I would just say like my background in photojournalism because I, I, I worked a lot in photojournalism, yeah. um, I guess really helped me sort of push um, or it just became kind of a norm that I would go somewhere, I wouldn't know anyone, I would introduce myself, I would either get rejected or, you know, be welcomed and then would move forward and uh, it was kind of, it became normalized to me so then creating a project where I would go and meet strangers became something normalized to me. Um, mm. But then when I think about how easy or not easy, but how different it is to approach people, you know, and photograph what, you know, it's just such a different, such a different experience. And you can also see yeah. that in the photos, I think. So do you like, uh, I'm curious, Sani, when you look at photos like this, um, these are part of Tomata's uh, a project going March. into the, the marshes right yeah. um which are just stunning photography it's beautiful right yeah. but do you view these as deeply personal are these clearly deeply personal uh, photos i mean for me for my for my own perspective no if i would shoot this it wouldn't be personal it would be yeah. a brave project actually <laughs> very brave yeah but for Tamara, this is clearly a, a very personal exercise, right? Uh, for her, it's also personal because it's yeah. Iraq and it's her homeland. You know, it's a different yeah. approach. Because if I go to Iraq, it's not a person. It's It would be like, I don't know, it wouldn't be a personal relation to yeah. the country or to the subject, you know? It would be a documentary or an assignment or something, I guess. Yeah. Um, Tomata, are, are, in essence, would you, oh sorry. Would, no, no, go ahead. I want to. I no, want to. I, I was just it. gonna say, like, in essence, uh, if you go back one slide, in essence, those photographs are documentary, um, and uh, there is a there is a distance between me and what I'm photographing because at the end of the day, I am, um, you know, not an Iraqi that lives in the marshes. So, yeah. uh, you know, there is sort of this uh, line that uh, gives distance between me. But of course it's personal in its own way because of the investigation or, or the research I'm putting into wanting to get to know something that is a part of my heritage. Yeah, um, yeah but not directly, obviously. At the end of the day, I did photograph it from a distance or in my with my own experience. Yeah. Because mm. it's, it's interesting. I feel like both, there's a little bit of like a full circle nature to this, right? Where like it's funny like Tanya's like I need to feel very comfortable to take portraits and you're like I need to feel invisible to take portraits. <laughs> you know and um both of you the, the, the first image that you chose the, the first sort of images that you remember are immediately connected to the work that you're trying to do um as if the work is almost like still an exploration of this these like childhood curiosities that. That's really, it's, that's amazing. That's so true. I mean, both of us, like you said, Tanya talked about her grandmother's photo. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and me, the, basically this book, this and another book. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually curious if we can go to, uh, I'm going to jump to some of um, uh, Tanya, some of the photos of like sort of your um, your grandparents' photos or, or your father's photos. Let me pull these up real quick because I'm really curious about. Um, oh yeah, my, my father. So like, 
That's a scan slide yeah. that my mother took of my father in Beirut. I don't know which year. It's not written on the slide, but I love this photo. Yeah. I, I love the slide. I mean, it's an image, whatever. Is this in, <laughs> is this in, uh, in Beirut? I don't know where it is. I'm honestly. trying to figure it out, figure out where it is. I'm trying, I'm spending my time trying to figure out where, what is in my family archive, but mm -hmm. I can't. I can't recognize Beirut in these old photos. I have photos of M Martyr Square and it's unrecognizable. I if wonder if this is near a Madhaf. I don't know. It also yeah. could be in Hamra or something, maybe. I don't know. I really don't. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really, really interesting. But um, and so I'm going to, th this these photos and these photos, I'd love to hear sort of, your relationship oh to God. these photos. I love these. Okay, um, these are all from, my father had like a bag of photos and he called it his life. And once I took it away from him because I was so fascinated by them. And I just wanted to have them in my place safe. And I just wanted to look at them over and over again. Um, and once he, he asked me, when can I have my life back? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't give it back to him. Yeah. Maybe I should have. But uh, the upper photo is my father with his sister dancing. And the lower photo is my father with another, some woman in the late 60s at, on a boat, I think. Were they cropped like this or you cropped them? No, I cropped them. I actually um, did a takeover for um, the outpost at some yeah. point on Instagram and I prepared some uh, photos, some archive photos and I I decided to, to crop them, to shoot them like this actually. I took photos with my phone of the archive. Yeah. So I chose the frame with my photo, with my phone. With the camera of my phone and i wanted it to be a kind of um unrecognizable as in you can't see the faces you don't really know who's there what they're doing or where they are i find it very intriguing and interesting yeah, yeah like really the only person that knows who they are is you kind of yeah, yeah. Kind of. are these do you feel like these are when you look at these photos uh do you think these are photos that are, in your mind, unmistakably in Beirut? For me, yes, but I don't know for someone who doesn't know or love Beirut, I don't know. For me, it definitely, man, so many photos of my dad are taken in uh, Cave du Roi, for example, La Cave du Roi or... Um, different places i mean he was he used to love uh, going out and dancing he was going out a lot so he used to have he has these photos that the photographers of the of the nightclubs used to take you know and then they used to give you the the print in like a, in, a, in an envelope so i have quite a lot of these mm -hmm. which is very interesting yeah. unfortunately um there are not many photos of Beirut as a city itself, as in architecture and streets, uh, general views, because my mother used to take more like portraits also, like people, mainly people. Yeah. We would have loved to have more of uh, general views of, of Beirut back then. So I have a, okay, I have a question for both of you, and I'm going to try to jump between these two images real quick. So let me see if I can do this properly. Um, I think. It is this slide. Nope, hold on, let me jump. Let me see if I get this right. So I wanna take the, I, I'm very curious about your, both of your interpretations um, of the sea. Oh yeah. Okay. So these two images uh, are tomatoes. Um, and then I wanna jump to some of uh, Tanya's images of Beirut, the water in Beirut. Let me get to them. And my question is, emotionally, so Tamara, when you see these images of Sanya's, are you like, oh, this is an interpretation of a feeling I've felt before? I know that feeling. I know what she's saying in this image. Or is it like, oh, you're saying something completely different? Um, 
I guess uh, it depends how or like where I am in, in terms of how I feel. So if I feel like I really miss Beirut because I'm not there right now, then I would feel very much longing for the for the sea and I would uh, I would experience it my, uh, personally. Yeah. So Tanya, it's like Tanya presents to me this image of the sea that she took. It's It was her photo and her gaze, but I took it for myself and I'm feeling through it in my own way. So that's how I see. And, and I do like when Tanya shares photos of the sea or she sends them to me, I have like very much, you know, like my heart beats faster because it's because uh, I, yes, I, you know, I love the sea. And I think a lot of people that live by the sea have a connection with it. I think a lot of photographers photograph the sea that live near it. Um, yeah. yeah. And I guess, Tanya, the same question for you. Like when you see stuff like this, yeah, I, I love uh, Tamara's sea photos. It's also, they're mainly portraitures as well, right? And I feel like, I don't know the texture of the, of the images and the light and everything. It just, I can feel the water. I can hear like in the photo below, I can just hear the waves, the sound of the waves. They're very, it's like, um, they're very real, very real. I feel that I'm more dreamy in my sea photos <laughs> and uh, and uh, Tamara is more like, it's more real, I feel, more close to reality than my photos. And I really love it. Yeah. yeah. I feel, yeah, Tamara, I feel like your, your photos are, I feel like they're cinematic. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. You know, exactly. I, can, I, I can hear them. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm waiting for the soundtrack, <laughs> you know? Um, it's there if you really... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you really concentrate. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and I'm pretty sure both you and Tanya have, like, stood very close to where these were taken, you know, like, and have seen those waves and that color and, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, very special. I'm curious what... Uh, before we get to the sort of quick Q&A, um, when did you first become aware of each other's work? Maybe, uh, Tanya, you can go first. Do you remember when you first became yeah, aware I, of each other's I, work? I don't, I don't remember exactly when, but I've, I've known about Tamara for years and years, really, and about her work. And I was always in awe, like, from the distance, like, uh, wow, this woman <laughs> and her work. I kind of admired her, but I was also intimidated. And then we met, we e-met kind of uh, in, a, in an online uh, workshop last winter. And I think it's, yeah, we started following each other and that's mm -hmm. when our friendship started. But yeah. I never, we never met in person. No. Not yet. Not yet. I think, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, we will. So we will, yeah. We have to meet in Beirut, actually. We will, yeah, we will. Um, same for me, like, I had known about Tanya's work for a long time, and I had seen, I think, the um, images of uh, the, uh, some of the musicians. I remember seeing that, and... and uh, that's and then, old work. Yeah, yeah, like, back in... Exactly, so that's how long ago. Yeah. And then... Um, and then I think I might have come across uh, a book of yours uh, somewhere, and... and okay. uh, there was like, yeah, I don't remember where, but so that was it. And then, yeah, so then we connected last winter, but then we had already kind of known about each other's work. Yeah. Do you, this sounds, this may sound like a weird question, but do you feel like you are both part of a similar generation or aesthetic? Do you feel like in 60 years, if people are thinking about the photography done in, in and around Beirut or in and around the, the, the region, in the 2010s and 2020s, um, they'll be able to sort of put dotted lines and say that connect the two of you and say, oh, there is similar aesthetic. They were working through similar ideas. They were uh, both of them were trying to think through similar stuff. Um, or does that not really resonate? But for me, it does resonate. I feel. I feel. Maybe I'm wrong. It's just a feeling. I feel that they, there are generations of photographers and each generation lives through different dramas and problems and um, 
visual styles as well, I feel. Like right now there are an amazing amount of very young photographers and they're amazing, they're very impressive and they have this, uh, they have a certain style, they have like a signature style, all of them, you know? It's very impressive. Or if you see the, of course, the photographers during the Civil War, it's a totally different uh, style, you know, and a different language, visual language. You can't compare it. So I think there are generations, photographer generations in Lebanon, in Lebanese photography, and it's very interesting and it's very rich as well. Tamara, you were kind of shaking your head. I was yeah. shaking. I yeah, was shaking I my to... head, not to the whole question. I was. I do. I do feel as though me and Tanya are, you know, we're in like a similar time and similar space. Um, uh, I I feel our work is quite different and similar at the same time, but it is different. I think that um, there is a stillness and a quietness to how I feel about Tanya's photos that I feel uh, minor a little bit. Uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit, not louder, but just uh, not as quiet. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe people would see things differently, uh, see them differently. But I, I uh, yeah, there's this like subtlety and, and uh, stillness that I really love about Tanya's work, mm -hmm. that I feel that I don't have that. Um, but, you know, I, you could see something else in my work that... Um, but at the same time, uh, I do think that we're of a similar generation. I'm someone who, you know, I'm not Lebanese originally, I'm Iraqi and I, I, I chose Lebanon as home um, more than, you know, uh, more than 10 years ago to 13 years ago. And um, I, I think I find it interesting that me and Tanya sort of came up as photographers and did our works um, at the same time, but never met. Never met. Was, also like, really so many people in common that's we have a lot of exactly we have a lot of people in common but i think at the same time you know we met now because it's just it just this is how right it works yeah. yeah yeah and we're seeing things similarly too i think uh even our work might end up like having more similarity now than than it did before probably yeah yeah, yeah. so and i and i also like was saying to jump on what tanya said about you know the generations and the photographers before and and then the ones that will be after uh there are so many like beirut uh, beirut has so many things that many people are you know many photographers or visual artists could like see and jump on or think is interesting and document um like there was this really beautiful um i don't know if it was a film or or photo uh, photos of um of the sea and like diving, diving men that I had seen by uh, Akram Zatari, I think from the nineties. And yeah. I remember seeing that like, you know, 10 years after and 10 years while I was doing the, the, the series of, of divers. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, it's, it just, it stays and it repeats and it's there and you want to, it's just really interesting how it. Uh, continues from you know decade to decade and generation to generation. You know, yeah. like the 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 men that were diving in Akram Zatari's work are, you know, are in their fifties now. Or yeah, you're, you're or, photographing their their great grandkids or their grandkids. or something like that. You know, and then yeah. the ones that I started <laughs> photographing in two thousand and eight when I started this this uh, project, and the ones that I do now also like how many generations changed. Right, it's really interesting. Yeah. Okay, I want to jump to our little quick Q&A um, because both of you are actually the inspiration for this new segment that, uh, that we've sort of designed for specifically for double exposure. And it is very much <laughs> inspired by the fact that um, you are Instagram friends. And, um, <laughs> and, and Tanya and I are Instagram friends, actually. Um, and so we were friends for a year before we ever met in person, more than a year. Um, and so there are three questions. The first question is, I asked you these beforehand. The first question is, why are these two photos good enough for Instagram, but not for the portfolio? So Tamara, how about, let's start with you. What is the story behind this photo and why did it make on Instagram, but maybe not quote unquote be portfolio worthy? Uh, 
Okay, so I so two things. First of all, when I sent you the photo, I said I don't differentiate between portfolio and uh, Instagram. Perfect. <laughs> but I wanted to send you one because, uh, for example, it's not a picture that I've taken. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a picture of my grandma and my great grandma that um, uh, that was a part of uh, my perhaps uh, recovery post, you know. Uh, Beirut explosion when I needed to draw color, do something that didn't have to do with photography. So I started coloring um, my uh, mom's old photos. Wow. One of them being, uh, this, was, this was the second one I colored. The first one was my aunt, um, who I've never met because she passed away at a very young age. Um, and it was a photo that was taken of her at university. And this reminded me of Tanya's uh, dad's photos because how there was like a photographer that would come and and uh, photograph and so it was the same they would have in Baghdad University photographers going and photographing people and then you know giving the card and then they'd go pick up the photos and it was one of those photos so I decided to fo- to color my aunt's photo because I'd never seen her in color mm-hmm. and then I continued into this and so that's why um, that's why I chose this for for this question that you had though, like I said, I don't really differentiate. That's a good, good uh, footnote. I love that. Mm. Uh, Tanya, what about you? Uh, This is um, a photo. I'm not sure yet if it will go into my new series or not. So um, beautiful. (laughs) beautiful. (laughs) I think it will actually. I mean, I also don't uh, make a difference between my Instagram and my, uh, my personal, I mean, it is my work. And, yeah. you know, I have a few commissions on my website, but the personal work, I have it on my website and on Instagram. So there is no real difference. But this photo, I mean, I think it will uh, be part of my uh, Beirut recurring dream series that I'm working on right now. But it's still the series. Is, I just started working on it last this summer, this past summer. So I'm uh, I'm not sure yet about the selection. So I'm. I'm posting stuff that that helps me also to curate the series in, on the go, you know, like yeah. while I'm in process. So I think it might join the series. I'm not sure yet. For now, it's on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next question. I asked you each to pick a, a favorite, a quote unquote favorite uh, photo from each other's Instagram. Yeah. Um, and so Tanya, how about we start with you? We'll, we'll do it in reverse order. So which one did you choose and why? I chose this beautiful, I love this photo. I shared it once because I love it so much. It's a view. I don't know, Tamara, is it a view from your house or is it just a view while you were walking around? I just, the feel yeah. gives me, it's just, I don't know. It has the sea and Beirut and this old building and then the bus and the greenery. I, I, I love this photo so much. It gives me a... a very um it's a bit eerie at the same time but it gives me a good feeling i like it so much uh i was uh, walking it's about maybe a two minute walk from my house so it was just a uh, kind of the at the level of my house and i wonder if it's eerie because of uh, like this one house sort of on the on the on the cliff and then no, this, i think the, the bus, bus is eerie the yeah, bus the, the bus. yeah it's one of those photos that I passed by a couple of times and I was like, should I take a photo of this? Because it's really interesting. Will I, <laughs> you know, do justice to the uh, to, to how it looks visually and through my eyes? And it did turn out really, I, I, I love this photo. Did. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, um, okay, so I will say, uh, so for my, it was really hard to choose from Tanya's photos because I like a lot of them, specifically a lot of, um, a lot of the plants and uh, flowers that she takes. And I didn't even realize how many you have in your, <laughs> it's crazy. It's like the gift that keeps on giving. You just keep finding. Um, so I chose this because honestly, I can, I can smell it. Yeah. Um, I can smell it. And then like, there's a part of me that's like, are they fake? Are they real? You know, like, but I mean, they look real. It's such an old photo. I don't even, I didn't realize it was on my, still on my. <laughs> yeah, I went down. I I went, that's, I went a, that's a deep cut. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember where I took it and 
I have to go to the post, I guess, to remember. I'm pretty sure most of the people on uh, can smell it. Yeah. Um, okay, which brings us perfectly to our last question, which is one of my favorite truths about your relationship, which is this photos and conversation series. So, uh, Tomata, how about you tell us about the conversation these photos are having? <laughs> I mean, the history of, okay, so, um, so these images are a part of a conversation that me and, and Tanya have been having over the course of the past, I don't know. Half year. Yeah, yeah, so maybe six, six to eight months or something um, through, through flowers. So we've been having a conversation through flowers, not much more than, than, uh, than that. Um, and so Mikey asked us to share uh you know like a photo that we'd sent each other recently and uh the one on the left was from like a week ago that I took as it was part of a painting that I saw um in Florence and then as you can see we can also you know our senses are also moving with with Tanya's photo yeah <laughs> actually I took this photo not long like four weeks ago um in the mountains in Lebanon yeah. yeah and now it's like it's literally I walk anywhere I walk and I see flowers I take a photo for Tamara and I think it's something really really special and beautiful and I'm happy it evolved into something like that and we'll see where else it takes us agreed I think it's very beautiful to uh uh to find a reason to take a photo every day yeah um especially yeah. as photographers who may be taking a, you know sort of long breaks from photography from time to time can i just say something as an observation i feel like these two photos you are each doing a cover of each other so let me make my case <laughs> i feel like tamari your 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 photo is almost you like tapping into tanya's style these small sort of nook and cranny this tucked away little thing this small detail that somebody doesn't notice that is like dripping with emotion and, and not nostalgia but emotion and sort of like a time gone by <laughs> whereas Tanya you're basically taking a portrait a vivid intense portrait of the rose, <laughs> of the rose. <laughs> exactly. that's true I never I'm thought like, you're doing impressions of each other wow by the way you're very true very true and yeah. I think I might have even mentioned while I was talking earlier that we might actually start photographing similarly to each other because yeah. we, it's like an inspired yeah. uh, movement of, of sharing uh, flower letters. So, yeah, it's so funny. Letters. Amazing. Good, uh, good point. Okay. Amazing. Okay, so let's uh, open up to questions. We have a few already. Um, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I think it's Hussein. Uh, Hussein, Hussein, I'm not sure. I'm asking you to unmute. Are you there? I am, hi. Hi, go for it. Hi. Okay, well, thank you. It's a uh, great session. Uh, this is my second time I, I'm here. And uh, my question is mostly about uh, if you ever encountered any um, harassment or felt uh, threatened when taking pictures in, I don't know, outdoor and how did you handle that situation? Great. I, I haven't, luckily, I haven't. But um, probably Tamara maybe has different experience in that. Uh, I haven't really either. I would say maybe, I mean, I might have felt a little bit uncomfortable here and there, uh, but nothing to... The thing is, especially with taking photos outdoors, it's all, for me, I, I usually ask people before I take the photo. So if they don't want to be photographed, then they just, uh, you know, say no, and then I say no problem. Um, or if I take the photo before, and then I ask them, and I tell them I took a photo of you, and if they don't want it, I can delete. But uh, no, nothing really like uh, bad or, yeah. <clears throat> okay, um, great, thanks for the question. The next question comes from Bruno. He asked me to read the question for him. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a few questions, so I'll just read the most recent one. Um, what cameras do you use? Uh, cameras, plural, I'll make it. Do you use regular old school camera, DSLR, mobile phone, all three? 
Um, this might be a simple question, but it might be worth just mentioning. All right, so um, let's do Tanya then Tamara. I, I like uh, when people ask this question because I always ask myself when I see photos with what camera has it been taken. So I use um, the phone, my digital camera and um, analog. Uh, I have different analog cameras, but my favorite is the Fuji 645, if I'm not mistaken, is the name. It's a medium format. Um, camera from the 80s it uses 120 millimeter roll film and I love it so much it's actually my favorite camera but I can't work assignments with that it's not possible because they, the assignments need to go fast and they need to be sent but this uh, medium format is my absolute favorite and the phone as well because it's very flexible cool Tamara I would say similar to Tanya, I have a, like a 5D that I shoot assignments with Canon and I also, um, I use my phone a lot. Um, and and, I, and I've and i also, I have a, um, a medium format uh, that I use sometimes. I use it for uh, shooting in, in the marshlands, which was very ambitious, <laughs> but <laughs> turned out to, to be, uh, to, to work out. Uh, that uh, was a Mamiya, I think six, uh, six four five maybe also um, yeah 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 cool. oh so they have all the same number or yeah something. it seems because i think i guess it's like a, uh six by four point five perhaps oh, yeah. i'm okay. not sure yeah, yeah i think yeah right. okay the next question comes from laramie i hope i'm saying your name Hi. correctly um, I was wondering about how your visual style has um, developed and what or who has influenced it during your career. Great. Let's uh, do Tanya, then Tamara as well. Hmm. I mean, it's very, it's a difficult question for, I feel, because I mean, uh, I think my, my, my own, the experiences I've had in life influenced my style, I guess. Um, also, of course, I have photographers or artists that really inspired me and, but not so much in style, just in maybe inspiration as in ideas and also technically, of course, you know, but in the style, I think it's my, it comes from, from myself, from what I've experienced in life, how I grew up, uh, what I lived, what I'm living. I think that's what defines the way I want to shoot and what I want to transmit through my images and cameras. Okay, great, Tamara. Very, uh, very excellent answer, Tanya. I think, <laughs> I, I mean, I really, I agree with much of that. Um, uh, I've, I've photographed, I guess, uh, since 2005, pretty like uh, all the time, I would say. And so it's there's been a lot that has changed in terms of my interest and what to photograph and how. And I used to do a lot of wide photos. That's how I started because I was in journalism and the, you know photojournalism was always very wide and then I became a bit uh, you know I then I, I just flipped the camera I was like oh my god it changed so much how I see things now and it was really like <laughs> it was amazingly uh, uh, eye-opening uh, to zoom in a bit and then uh, yeah, I mean, over time, it just, you you change. If I look at my photos from when I worked at the New York Times in 2006, I mean, it would always be, would think about like, oh, I would shoot this differently. Or I would hope that just with any, um, with any creative or, uh, you know, like with any creative or art, you grow over time and evolve uh, your style. And that's, I think that's what has happened to me and will probably continue to. And I think probably Tanya would agree with that. And wow. in terms of inspiration, you know, all kinds of um, people, uh, photographers that I know and love their work and, um, you know, Instagram is a great space to be inspired yeah. um, by people, so. Great. Um... Lara, then Rama, then I probably have a final question myself. Okay, Lara, are you there? 
Ah, yes, I'm there. Um, right. Hi, Tamara. Um, hi, hi Tamara. <laughs> uh, really great to see you both. And uh, I have a question related to, it's kind of like related to the question before, but this has like more as like, how does change and growing older impact uh, your photography style? Um, like, how do you stay consistent with your style? Like, I feel like sometimes I've been through like journalism and like at the same time I, I do art. So mm -hmm. how to kind of like balance that and um, yeah, how to find home or, or familiarity in a way through your photos um, in different places. Do either of you want to take that? Go ahead, Tamara, if you want. Uh, I'm just really excited that Laura's here with Laura uh, is a really amazing Palestinian photographer who was part of my workshop in Gaza in 2016. Amazing. So I'm really, really happy to see you here and I've uh, been following your work. And I think that for me, just, I mean, it's kind of similar to maybe earlier what we were talking about. It's, I mean, I think whenever you, whenever you photograph a project and then you continue, maybe do another project over the, after that, it's like, what kind of visual style am I going for? Or how do I feel like this, this subject that I want to shoot fits into my own, um, you know, my own visual style? I don't know. It's hard. It's a very hard question. But I think, I think that uh, over time, you feel, you, your work has a similar like taste and feel because it's you at the end of the day and it's something you're presenting depends what it is obviously but going between photojournalism and like more art photography or portraits it's there's a you can have a nice um like a nice feeling between them all that can still be something that looks like something you would take or you know it would still feel like a lara photo or a tamara photo or a tanya photo um, if you took it uh, with with sort of I don't know the same the same mindset the same passion for whatever it is you're taking that's what I would hope but it could also be different I don't know I mean it's yeah. a hard question that's why perhaps that didn't that wasn't a very clear answer can I actually repurpose the question a little bit for mm. Tanya specifically um, Tanya because I feel like you know, when we were talking earlier, um, you very intentionally said, I really want to focus on some of my new newer stuff. Um, and there was an evolution in your work that for you, you were like very excited to, to evolve in, in a specific way. Do you, do you, are you concerned with consistency or are you concerned more so with sort of like evolution? I'm more concerned with evolution, and I. But I think the older we get, the more consistent we become because we know ourselves much more. We know what we like, what we don't like, what's okay for us, what's not okay for us, and it defines us. But when I was younger, I didn't really know these things. Yeah. So I think the older we get, the more consistent our work gets, no matter if we shoot a bit of journalism and a bit of art photography or um, portraiture or whatever, I think then we'll have this signature throughout all the, the photos we shoot. But it takes time. It takes many years, I feel. And I think it continues until the end. <laughs> Let's yeah. I agree. I agree. I mean, I've, you know, 15 years, 16 years later, there's, it sounds like a lot, but there's yeah. way more to go and way more to learn and way more to evolve. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, I wonder if we have time for Rama, do you want to ask your question real quick before we hit the hour? Yeah, sure. Um, I had like a two pronged question, but I might just like ask one and then if we have time, I can ask the other. Um, so you both have a you seem to have a strong relationship with uh, Beirut um, as a place which has uh, nurtured your perspective. Um, and this is like a common thread for both of you. Um, and so I was wondering like, as the city goes through its like life cycle and its many um, ups and recently downs, uh, how do you, do you, does that sort of seep into your photography in a natural way or do you mitigate that? Um, I think, especially with the body of work I'm working on now, I think I'm trying to 
to uh, to sh to <laughs> it's so difficult to show what Beirut is now, but still grasp the old kind of uh, Beirut shining through. It's still shining through, kind of with all with everything that's happening now. So um, I don't know if I'm answering the, the question correctly, but um, Tamara, if you wanna if you wanna say something. I uh yeah I I think I I understood I mean I I felt like I understood what you just said about your work and how what you're working on um would have Beirut still seep through for me personally I my project currently is uh about Iraq um the one that I'm working on for for uh, the next year and and so I'm I'm a bit sort of on the outside of uh Beirut now is uh, not fully in my periphery and uh, it's there is a distance between us and it's, it's hard but it, it will be uh, you know the the distance will become smaller soon hopefully but right now it's more Iraq for me and uh, in terms of my work um, yeah <laughs> But Beirut had a very big. Sorry, I was gonna say it had a. It has a very big uh, effect on me uh, and my work. Yeah, I go think ahead, I, Tanya. Oh, sorry, Tanya, go for it. I I just want to say Beirut is extremely photogenic with all its ugliness. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. it is. It's very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, with that, I I don't want to take advantage of your time. Um, Tamara, Tanya, thank you so much for doing this. It was uh, really a dream to a dream pairing to kick off the new series. Um, mm -hmm. This was absolutely wonderful. For those of you who were here, uh, it was great to have you on the call and hear so many different perspectives. Huge shout out to Rema and the rest of the GPP team. I think I saw Samji uh, jump in at the very end. Um, we are excited about this. We have a new uh, one in a couple weeks with Tasmim. And another Tanya, Tanya Habjuka, which is going to be fantastic. We are excited about. Um, so go to the website, find out more about the series. We have five events this week, which is ridiculous. But we have an event tomorrow about uh, immigration to New York from Syria, uh, greater Syria at the end of the 19th century. The event after that is about um, with Fadi Qattan, the Palestinian chef, part of the Matbakh series. And then the event after that is with Adib Dada exploring reforestation efforts across the region and in particular Lebanon, urban reforestation. And then this Saturday, we have another community presentation. So tons of friendly nerds trying to contribute and reframe the narratives about this region. So it's, we'd love to have you there. Okay, everybody. See ya. This was fun. Tanya. Thank you. Tomorrow. Thank you Thanks for so having us. It was really enjoyable. Thank you so much to everyone for being here. Thank you, everyone. It was great. Thank you.